Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is another work in progress on the large cliff uh, slash island project that I've been showing some work in progress videos on previously. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining me. And um, there is a video um, a few back that showcased the, um, or maybe not that far back, uh, but that showcased the uh, passageway that's an interior structure of the uh, large cliff project. But at this point, um, with that finished and installed, um, I've been able to build what I'm calling the superstructure, the main body of it, and um, get that into a final assembly or very near there um, so that I can begin to map out the elements that are going to go on to it and um, begin to carve into that uh, to uh, start uh, getting that that detail done. So what I'd like to do today is show you that superstructure. Uh, super, it is a superstructure though. This is the largest single piece of terrain I have built to date and I will talk to you about that when we take a look at it. So let's take a look at the beast and I'll show you what's been done so far. Um, so starting at the front here and going to the very back of this piece and it does slope towards the back uh, This is approximately now uh, about 70 inches long. It was about 65 inches But I decided I wanted to add just a little outcropping here to make this a little irregular when I carve it To add a little bit more visual interest as I really want to avoid it coming out as a big oval Which as you can imagine if I just trim off these corners, that's the way it's going to happen um, so anyway um, 70 inches this way and and oh, that little piece of foam there is not attached um, running from the edge of this base to this side and running to the very edge of the base on the floor here it is now 53 inches across that is the absolute maximum that this piece can be why I will not be able to get it out of the shop if it's one inch wider um, I'll have to turn this on its side um, which will give me a 25 inch height here to fit through the doorway and the length of it will be traveling up through the bulkhead stairs and when it goes up the stairs it will strike the roof and as it is at 53 inches the distance I have available is 52 but I will be able to lean it because of the taper and then um, leaning it I will be able to get it out I have never ever had such a large piece to worry about I thought the castle was dicey this uh, makes the castle look small um, in fact I spent over an hour trying to map out whether it would fit coming out of the uh, basement shop and uh, it just barely does so <clears throat> we move on um, basically you can see here and I didn't continue it up the entire piece um, but these are the angle markings that I put in place uh, based on my diagram to reflect um, what each face is going to have for an angle whereas on this side I don't know if you can see them there in the corner this is um, a 70 degree angle over here we're going to have a 60 degree angle but a, a walking slope that's much gradual much more gradual than that and then coming up on the face of this you'll see them on the other side in a minute um, this is a 50 degree angle Angle. but this is going to be a slope that allows for uh, units to scurry up and so um, what I've done here is just started to bulk this out a little bit now of course I'll be carving into the piece um, so I will be able to produce a more gradual slope in areas but I suddenly realized that it was quite a quick transition to this point and I really felt like I wanted to have some sort of an easy access point to begin that sloping coming up there can be some other scramble points and that's part of the plan but i wanted to have some sort of a reasonable pathway to the top that breaks and meanders um, it's nothing that looks too formal but something that's a little bit more reasonable to move miniatures along and that means that i can't increase the slope too too much so you know some of this a lot of this may get cut out later but it's best to put them in now and give me some room with the uh, hot wire tools or saws um, that i might bring to bear on this and uh, be able to give me you know because it once you start carving it's much harder to add material on at that point and um, we're going to take a look at this side in more detail in just a minute but I want to just give you another um, look at the top and make a quick comment on it the original plans for the piece was to have this stretch um, 35 inches across and be 25 inches wide with a 25 inch square to um, uh, receive um, structures on the top and then a flat area for assaulting troops to sort of enmass themselves or something to that effect. Um, once I had assembled this um, and I had this at, um, oh gosh, I think it's 20... 
I think it's 24 inches to this point, so it's actually 25 and a half. Um, I thought it might be nice to add one more additional layer, particularly as I was coming in fairly close to the top of the uh, passageway entrance. For some reason, this is the only aspect of my plans that ended up off by, I think, about an inch. And so um, I wanted to give just a little bit more header um, to the top of the uh, entrance. And so um, adding another layer of one and a half inch foam, I think, uh, does that quite well. And it also delineates that 25 by 25 area a little bit more clearly and then um, gives me an area where I can add a little bit of a gradual slope. Um, I believe I cut this um, to uh, 28 or something to that effect um, so I'll have a little space to, to taper this down and I can build this up as well. So let's take a look at this side here down below us and we'll talk a little bit about some of the features you can expect to come very soon. So perhaps we should first talk about the entrance um, and the plans for that. As I mentioned before, there is going to be a facade that goes against the entrance that's going to be about two inches thick that will have uh, more runes uh, carved into it. And um, then um, there will be an open access to this floor. Now what I've done is really stack the foam up around it to give me the most flexibility in the carving of it, particularly because there are other elements that are very close to the entrance. And so I want to be able to provide as much foam to the side as I can for those elements. So this is, excuse me, these are all going to be um, carved way back, um, probably at an angle, and then the um, flooring of the uh, entranceway will be exposed for the slope. So you're probably noticing at this point there's some markings on the foam here. What I've done is, um, based on my diagrams, I wanted to check to make sure that all of my scaling on the, uh, you know, the, the elements that are going to show up are actually going to fit in the right spot based on my drawings. Um, in fact, you know, in mentioning that, I should add that this is no, <laughs> this is no mere throwing stacks of foam together. Um, because I wanted to maintain the maximum use of the foam, uh, and I'll show you the interior of this section here in just a few minutes, um, I wanted to cut strips of foam, but have them be thick enough that I can carve into them without worrying about breaching the interior and also have enough of a dimension to match all of those slopes. So this was not just slapping layers of foam on. This was all um, sort of arduous measurements to make sure that I was going to have all of the space that I need. And in fact, in a couple areas, um, I'm a little bit concerned that I may not have given myself enough space, but I won't know that until I begin carving. And there are ways to fix that should that happen. So. Um, once I had that structure built, I needed to make sure that I hadn't made a mistake and that all the elements were going to fit. So I grabbed a, a can of spray paint, and since I'm going to be carving this, I don't have to worry about it melting into the foam, so that's not an issue. And um, I decided to mark them out. So this is going to be a... Um, oh, cat. Oh, oh, somebody wants to go exploring. He's been... Oh my goodness. Um, well, that'll be interesting. Um, in any case, <clears throat> yeah. Hi, George. Okay. He's, he's making sure I've done everything correctly, and he's going to knock the camera around. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Off you go. Off you go. I, I had a feeling he might show up because he is actually in the house in the evening here. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll enjoy George's um, addition here for a few minutes. Yes. Um, so that is one of the archer emplacements that's going to flank the entrance, if you can see that. Okay, all right. Now, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, one of the... Jesus. He's a little crazy, isn't he? All right, he's better on top there, where you can feel like he's king of the mountain. He's been checking out the top of this periodically as it's been constructed. Um, so that will be one of the archer emplacements. Um, and that is, if you notice, very close to the corner. So I will likely be building this out somewhat. Okay, all right, all right. Come on now, I'm trying to be professional here. Um, so I'll likely have to build a shelf out of that um, to accommodate that. Um, there's also another archer emplacement here. And uh, George will um, probably be shot to death by said archers um, once the emplacement is put in. And then um, there is going to be a lava entrance here. And I was a little bit concerned about the uh, lava entrance and its spacing to the final um, archer emplacement. But everything came out just right and it matches. Boy, he's a ham today, huh? It's because I'm on the floor. All right, go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Luckily, any chewing or damage he does to the phone right now doesn't matter. And um, what you'll notice here 
is then I've painted in um, two things. This is the expected lava flow angle. Um, my original diagram, I had it at 15 degrees, so I wanted to check that as well as the union with the uh, walkway. And this is where there's going to be the stone bridges, uh, stone bridge with the arches, and the lava will fall through that and then pool at the bottom. So I really wanted to check that height as I was a little bit concerned about the dimensions at the bottom here, as I mentioned, this isn't part of it. And whether I, I did bulk this out a little bit, um, it was originally um, uh, just under 50 inches, and I brought this out in this section particularly so I'd have more room to carve in a pool to receive the lava as I really wasn't sure where that's going to end up um, and I still am not entirely sure but looking at it it's likely to sit inside and so in fact I may be able to trim some of this and give me um, just that couple inches of buffer and removing it but it will fit as it is <laughs> um, and then what you see here is the uh, marking for the line for the path that will be um, carrying uh, from the bottom of the piece all the way up to the entrance on the uh, you know, all the way to the entrance, I should say the platform for the entrance. And so um, I would give you a more uh, stepped back look at this section, but unfortunately there is no more space for me to back the camera up. So you'll have to piece all these little sections together on your own to get a real sense of what that looks like. Oh, and somebody's interested in helping me do some carving. Um, He's uh, quite um, interested in doing some... Oh, we got to take a look at the interior. Oh, boy. All right. I'm going to uh, move the camera here and uh, move George and show you what's going on inside. So, as I mentioned, I've left a section down below unattached. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. So, that section is unattached. And I also wanted to leave the top unattached. And I'm going to have to move George. He really likes uh, being up on this piece. Um, that should be interesting down the road. Um, oh, God. He gets bigger every day. Uh, but this is the most casual video I've shot. Um, with my, I should say it's my most casual visual uh, video shot. Uh, that's a bad pun. In any case, I've left the top open as well as I was originally considering whether to uh, run the wiring from the top or run the wiring to the bottom. And by leaving these two pieces unattached, I have options for doing both. Um, I decided that I'm going to need to run the wires to the bottom. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Well, excuse my uh, cat here. There is no way I can get George to not be in this video, apparently. So we're going to work around him. And I'll try to sum this up relatively quickly. Um, by leaving the open in top as well, I can um, get access to the um, lighting to do the final modifications to the light cycles and install those. And then I actually discovered on the back side here that um, I'm going to need to remove sections of the structure to get access to the rear light in the stairs. So what I did is actually pin all of those pieces of foam in place so that once I have this all built and I've moved the wiring and I've done all the final revisions, I can pull them out, install the lights in the back of that, and then glue all of those pieces and foam in place um, for sculpting later on. So. Um, since I cannot get much more done uh, while George is here and you have gotten a relatively big overview of this piece, we'll wrap this up and go to conclusions. So uh, that shows you the uh, cliff project in its current stage as well as a very long uh, demonstration of, of George's uh, interest in my work. Uh, normally I would edit out uh, most of that and reshoot it um, but uh, I actually am running a little late tonight to get this video done and I really want to get it up for the customer on the weekend. So uh, you get a unique look uh, today at the project as well as uh, my cat. Um, in any case, um, hopefully you'll come back soon and um, follow me on this project. I will be shooting work in progress videos um, at uh, stages, at intervals as I work through it. Um, so hopefully you'll find some uh, tips and tricks that maybe you can use. And um, of course, I'm always um, you know, open to suggestions that people make along the way uh, because uh, you know, some of that feedback and exchange is really, I think, what helps take the whole um, art form, if we can call it that, up to the next level for everybody. So uh, questions and comments? Down below, always welcome, and um, I will see you and probably George um, real soon.